Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome back to another edition of Solve. Today, today we are working on a 2004 absolutely gorgeous Chevrolet SSR. Very well detailed, incredible vehicle. A customer called me up and they said that the vehicle, when you put the key on, Physically, it's in park, but as you see here, it's stuck in reverse according to where the cable is, right? So let's go underneath. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, so there's your cable, right? This is your shifter cable, or what should be connected to the transmission, and there's your problem right there, the nylon bushing or whatever it's made out of, that piece of garbage. But we're gonna solve it today, on this edition of Solved, with this. First and foremost, I'd like to thank The Dictator, located here in Florida, who advised me about SSRfanatic.com, as you see right there. You can go to the how-to library on SSRfanatic.com to do the step-by-step -step instructions. Also, pointing out a special thanks to simpleengineering.com, Mike Morrow, and we're gonna be getting into that in another video, but here is the dictator's information. If you wanna take screenshots or pause and write the information down. Now the dictator has been able to put this little contraption together, which is going to replace the broken lever bushing and completely remove it out of the system and this is a more permanent fixture let's get to it okay so we're back underneath here and what you're gonna do is number one you want to make sure you do not move this cable wherever it is however it's disconnected leave it in that position otherwise you'll have sequencing shift uh, alignment problems later so there you can see that nut Ugh. So this nut right here, which is a 15 millimeter, we take this off. I won't pause the video, I'll just keep it going. All right, so set that aside somewhere, don't lose it. Now you have the lever here, which you have to get off. And again, it's important to make sure that nothing is moved. So let's uh, get the tool to remove that. Okay, so now we're going to continue. I'm having to use a pair of duckbill pliers. Grab that, and then it just comes off nice and easily. Now, this may not be your problem, so I want to just point out that I did collect a couple of parts. 78S is the battery, in case you don't have power. The 14057 is your dormant bushing kit. Then we also have, this is your NSS, neutral safety switch. And this is what it looks like. I would like to also point out, heed this warning. The pigtail connector that goes into here. I've been informed by a very reliable source that out of the factory, I don't know why, but they glued the connector to this. So when you're dismounting and changing the transmission, just simply remove it from the hold down bolt locations here and here. If you're gonna change it and just let this hang. If you need to change this, you can put some heat to this like map gas or something. As long as you know how to use it, you want very little heat, even if it's a, um, what do they call those? Like, a, not a hair dryer, but uh, the, hot, the hot air gun. Looks like a hair dryer. Uh, that might be able to break the glue I don't know why GM did it, but that's what I was told. So let's dive back into this. And what we're going to do is we're going to have your lever set up now in a vise. I happen to have one on the back of the truck. And what you're going to do is you're going to grind off this little peg that has this bushing, which we won't need either piece. And I'll show you what it looks like, but I got to pause it here. Now, the way I plan on doing it is maybe a little unconventional, but the M12 Milwaukee... I don't know what this part number is here. I probably have the sticker over it. It is a 2522-20. 
and I happen to have it with the 6.0 battery. So what you're gonna do is, we're gonna grind this off here. I'm gonna need two hands, but you get the idea. I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. Okay, so now that's what should it look like when you're done. Okay, you gotta cut this one off here. What I did was, I cut this off. Let's see if I can do this. I cut it straight down like this. Then I gave this a little bit of heat on this side. I took this punch. I went in this way. Done. Let's put it together now. So I'm just mocking it up here just so you can get an idea. So this part right here, that's going to be going into the cable housing itself. So that's where this part's going to sit. Then you have this flat washer. Bolt goes through. You have another flat washer. And then you have this wax nut which will hold it down and lock it in place. And once this is done, you're done forever. Won't have to do it again. So let's get to it. Oh, also side note here, uh, obviously when this isn't all together, it'd be a good idea to uh, paint it. Uh, otherwise it'll rust, obviously. So uh, we'll do that first and I'll show you what it looks like. Also, I wanna take a side note moment here. Uh, when I spoke with the dictator, and uh, I met the gentleman today, what a nice guy, super knowledgeable. If you have any questions, I strongly suggest uh, you reach out to either Mike Morrow or the dictator, they'll definitely help you out as much as they can, or go to ssrfanatic.com and of course they're gonna help you too. Um, I happen to be using caliper paint, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. What additionally I found out to get today from the dictator was that there is also a shield which you can get from simple-engineering.com which is Mike Morrow and that heat shield uh, is supposed to protect uh, the plastic that's very close to it it's such a bad design flaw if you will um, the catalytic converters right there unless you're running headers and either way you're well over a thousand degrees um, I really don't know how they made it to production but it is what it is. Let's get this painted up and get this done. And there you go. All pretty shiny again. I'm going to let that dry and we'll install it. And I did forget to mention, but I am currently wearing them. Safety glasses. Always have your safety glasses. Okay. So I put the nut back on finger tight for the moment. As you can see, I put this in through here and you see how that just slides in. Then what you want to do is put a washer here on this side. And then, oop, too far. I can't see what the camera can see at the moment. I'm trying to get this lined up. I'm gonna need two hands. Okay, continuing on here, you see how it's situated there. Now you got to put the flat washer on and the nut. Now once you're complete, this is what it should look like. All said and done. By the way, the head on this side is an H4. This is a 12 millimeter nut and that's a 15 up there. Now we got to go inside and make sure. I'm okay, so we are all set getting back in. You see it's in uh, the park is now lit up. It's in park there. We have to just reassemble this. The customer had disassembled it. And thanks again for watching another edition of Solve. Hopefully this video has helped you or if you know somebody that it could help, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. We'll see you in the next video. Hasta lasagna, but don't get any on you.